Since owning this lathe then, having a quick change tool post and holders has been a big goal of mine to speed up production on the lathe. Well, over the last couple of weeks, that goal has become reality with a now fully functioning library of tool holders and a quick change tool post to accommodate those holders. In the last instalment then of the quick change tool post build, I kind of hinted that this was the last video, but how sadly wrong was I? I'm actually going to sum this up today and we're going to finish this off by doing a much needed modification to this tool post to make it a fully functional bit of kit in the workshop. Right then, I left the last video not really knowing if I was going to do another quick change tool post build video and thinking about it, I didn't really sum up that last video that well. I didn't finish it in a way that's fitting to this quick change tool post. So if you cast your mind back all the way to, I think it was the first or second video on this build, I hinted that I was going to machine out the bottom of the quick change tool post to allow a boss and I've not actually done yet, that yet. So I thought it's only fitting to finish this in a good way and get what I set out to do from the beginning done. So that's what I'm going to be doing in today's video. I'm going to be making a boss for the quick change tool post to sit on and I'm also going to be machining out that recess in the bottom of the quick change tool post to accept the boss. Before we start this modification today then, I want to explain really the importance of why I want to fit a boss underneath this quick change tool post. So to do that, I've got my Walco WM180 compound slide here. Just for uh, shits and gigs, look at the size comparison. It's quite funny just seeing that there. But getting back on topic, the, uh, the boss. So if we take the original tool holder that came with this compound slide off, you can see on top of the compound rest here, we've got this boss feature and in the bottom of the tool post we've got a recess for that to sit. So when you slide that over the stud, it locates on that boss and you know that that is central to the stud. So the reason I personally think this is really important is because you've got a lot of lateral force going through this thing and if you're just relying on that lateral force holding through the stud, Chances are you're going to do a really deep cut one day and end up shearing that pin off. I'll say that pin, sorry, that stud off. So that's why, given the size of this thing and the forces going through it, I really want to make sure this is going to be as rigid and solid as possible and never going to stack that stud. So that's what we're going to be to doing today. is basically replicating this, but just on a slightly larger scale. Starting with the easiest part of this modification then, I'm going to start by doing the boss. So to begin with, I'm just going to face this part off. I'm trying to save up material here, so I'm just using this off cut of aluminium that I've got. last pass and that should have cleaned all this up nicely. So with the face all now clean, what I need to do is I need to turn this down to a set diameter. And to make my life really easy, this is currently 51mm and because I'm customising both sides, I'm going to do this to 50mm. So it's going to make boring out this part a little bit harder but I think it'll be worth it just for the extra hold it's going to have being a bigger surface area. So my plan is to turn this down till we get a pretty, I want it pretty bang on 50mm so although it isn't too important I'm aiming for a good tight fit here. So yeah I'm going to turn this down 50mm and then we need to centre drill and drill out to accept a 12mm reamer. Once that's done, I'll be parting this off, adding a few chamfers before I fully part it off, and then the boss will be all finished. So that really is the easiest part done. So, 
gonna carry on with this now. Time to test the boss then over the stud and see if it has worked how I thought it would. So, seems to fit over there, sits over there, lovely. So that's really good, only a very slight bit of movement there on the stud, so I can deal with that. So that part for now is done, we're going to come back to this later on where we'll be drilling and counter boring some screw holes in here so we can attach this to the compound slide. Next thing we need to do now then is we need to dial in the four jaw chuck with the tool post in it and start to bore out a hole in the centre to accept this boss. As with any boring procedure then, you want to take your time and you don't want to go too greedy with your cuts. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm taking things nice and slow and making sure I don't plunge too deep into the work straight off. So as you can see from the outer black ring on here, I've already marked this up with a sharpie just so I know roughly where I'm aiming for. When it comes to getting the right tool clearance, I'm just going to be switching up my tool post from a slight offset to going straight into the work. I find that helps best when starting off from a small hole and enlarging it. It's quite good to start off with a slight angle and then towards the end when you're going to finish up, straighten up your boring bar so you're going straight in and getting a nice 90 degree corner angle there. Trying the boss in the board hole then for the first time and it looks like I'm a little bit out. So need to bore this hole slightly deeper but for the actual diameter this is bang on really. This is a really nice snug fit. So I won't enlarge the diameter anymore, just bore out a bit more so this can sit flush. And hey presto, just like that we've got this part sitting nice and flush now. I'm actually really surprised how well that went. So the final fit here, oh, let's get her in there, it's quite tight, but that's a really flush fit and we've got pretty much no movement in that. So much so it gets stuck in there. But I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. We've only really got a few things left to do now on this and then this should all be finished. So. I'm going to take this boss now over to the milling machine 
and we're going to be drilling and counter-boring some holes so this can be countersunk onto my compound slide. Once this is drilled, I know exactly where I'm going to be drilling holes in the compound and we can drill and tap them to the final size. And then this is all pretty much done. Really excited to see how this has turned out because so far this has been a great little upgrade to the quick change tool post. Over on the mill now then and we've got our workpiece all set up here in the vise and it's probably quite an unusual setup, probably something you've not seen on the channel before. But basically to try securing this round part I'm using a set of V-blocks here and a set of parallels down here just to make sure this is parallel. Now to centre up this hole with my spindle I'm going to use a little trick that I saw the other day on Blondie's hacks. So because I don't need this to be super accurate this is probably going to work quite well. But basically what I've got, I've got a 12mm drill bit in here and I'm just going to move my axes until the drill bit goes straight through the hole with a fairly sort of even surround. So if I needed this to be really accurate, I probably wouldn't be doing this. I'd probably use, be using my edge finder. But for what I want these holes for, it doesn't need to be that accurate. So this method should work okay. Right, we've got clearance there, so I'm going to say that is good enough for this. So I'm going to zero out my DRO here. Next thing we need to do now is I need to drill two 6mm clearance holes here before counterboring them. So I think I'm probably going to do about 10mm this way, 10mm that way and drill on. With the boss all now firmly bolted down, I can begin to reassemble the quick change tool post. And that seems to slide over there lovely. And I've got to admit, with that bolted down now, that's really rigid, that's not going anywhere. So now we can just carry on assembling the rest of the quick change tool posts. Making sure that's square and fully tight. So that is all done. Really happy of how this has turned out. I suppose the only thing really to do is do some test cuts, see if this has made any difference. Well, the test cut seems to be going relatively well, giving a good surface finish and no judder or vibration. So it's a bit too early to tell but I'm going to say this is probably going to be a success. It's going to have increased the rigidity and hopefully the longevity of this live post. Unfortunately, with that being said, we're closing in on the end of the quick change tool post build.
There we have it then guys. The end of the quick change tool post video. And also the end of my mental hair that's been going on over the last few months. And it cut up. So just want to give a massive shout out to Steel City Gav. Gav, without you, this project wouldn't have happened so quick. So a massive thank you to you. And I hope we can continue this partnership for videos to come. But that's the end of the Quick Change Tool Post build video series, guys. It's been really fun making this. And best of all, it's actually a really good bit of kit in the workshop. Something I'm going to be using in a daily basis when I'm in here in the shop. If this is the first time you've been watching one of these Quick Change Tool Post build videos, then please watch the rest of the playlist and enjoy. It's been real good fun making this and using this. So hope this will help some of you out there. For now though, that is it. See you next week where we'll be back here in the workshop doing some machining. Happy machining guys. Thanks for watching.